Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. If you're also back, welcome back to the We're Back crew. How's it going? Say hi to the family for me. But if you're new and maybe, just maybe you like what you see, please consider, hold on, go ahead. That plane was extra loud and extra rude for no reason. Here I am welcoming you to my channel in case you're new. Hopefully you do like what you see and you'll consider subscribing. Let's go ahead and jump into this video, which I am really excited about, all right? We're talking all about the new blushed liquid blushes from Juvia's Place. Oh my God. So apparently these have been making their rounds on TikTok and people have been complaining about how pigmented these are. And that to me is actually a pro or a positive. So I went ahead and grabbed a couple of shades of these. And then halfway through filming the video, I went ahead and picked up some more. So. We're gonna talk all about these blushes. I'm gonna swatch them on my cheeks for you. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to apply a really pigmented cream or liquid product. Also give you some tips on how you can correct it if you go overboard with your blush. Either way, we're gonna have fun in this video talking all about these products, which I'm actually really excited to get into. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So as mentioned, these are the new Juvia's Place Blushed Liquid Blushes. I know, I don't know why they called it that, but it's the Blushed Liquid Blushes. They retail for $18 and contain eight milliliters of product or 0.27 fluid ounce. There are 12 beautiful shades to choose from and it is available for sale in store at Ulta and also online at the Ulta website as well as juviusplace.com. I do have a discount code with Juvia's Place. It's not affiliated, but you can get 10% off. Plus they're always having sales on the Juvia's Place website so you can get them at even a better price point than $18. And you can also use coupons at Ulta, either in store or online, which is what I did to get these at a better price point. Because $18 for me is a little steep for Juvia's Place, especially when it comes to liquid blushes. But I was so impressed that I went ahead and picked up 10 shades. So. I'm going to show you these up close and swatch them out so you can get an idea while I give you a little bit more info about this product. So it says, our lightweight multi-use liquid blush creates effortless radiance and a dewy finish for cheeks. Highly blendable, this pigmented cream formula hydrates the skin with vitamin E for a natural looking glow. This blush is cruelty free, vegan, and made without gluten, parabens, phthalates, and non-comedogenic ingredients. On the Juvia's Place website, it says, the blushed liquid blush is a buildable, radiant, pigmented, and blendable formulation in complementary hues. This iconic liquid blush will accentuate your natural features in all the right places for an effortlessly flawless finish on any complexion. The packaging is reminiscent of the lip products from Juvia's Place. It it comes in a chubby tube packaging with a pink and gold cap. The tube is clear with the Juvia's Place logo on the side. And then on the bottom, we have a label with the shade name and manufacturing details. Inside, we have an oversized doe foot applicator and we have a decent sifter that will take off the majority of the product. But like they said, it's pigmented. So you'll wanna go ahead and remove as much excess off the applicator before going in with this product. The product is made in the USA and has an intended usage life of 12 months. And like I said, it is available in 12 shades and I went ahead and picked up 10 of the shades. So I'm really only missing two. And you've seen the swatches that I've shown you up close on my arm. These are really pigmented and a little bit goes a long way. So you want to minimize how much product you actually apply to the skin. And with that being said, how about we actually go ahead and apply these to the cheeks. I want to show you these shades swatched out on my complexion in case you use me as reference and you want to see how the colors show up on your skin and how they blend out. I will also kind of go into the critique of this product and we will see if they're valid at all. Are these too pigmented, which is the criticism, right? They're too pigmented, they're difficult to blend out. Oh my God, they're just too much overall. 
we're going to see just how true that is. But really and truly, I just want to apply these and give you some tips and tricks on how to apply a really pigmented liquid or cream product and what to do if it gets out of hand, right? And I'm going to apply this the way I normally would with my foundation and powder already applied. So this will not be on bare skin, which you can absolutely apply these blushes on bare skin. In fact, you can do an underpainting method where you apply the blush first before your foundation and complexion product if you really want to tone down the intensity. But this application is going to represent how I would normally apply them in everyday wear. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, guys, are you ready for the swatches? I am low-key excited, so let's jump right into it. And I figured that we could swatch similar shades together, so one on each cheek so you can see the nuances to the shades. So we have the first two shades, which are Coral Rose and Lily Love. Those look very similar. Then we have Perky Poppy and Dahlia very similar burnt orange tones and then the last shade barbie rose will swatch by itself she doesn't have a friend and she's just gonna ride solo and i'm going to be blending out these swatches with my singe beauty f01 brush these are great synthetic brushes that work well with cream and liquid products all right Starting off with our first shade, which is Coral Rose. This one is described as a nude coral. And I'm going to do the thing that I would recommend you not do, okay? Do not do this if you're applying these blushes, but for the sake of the video, let's just do what everybody's been doing and apply it directly to my skin from the applicator. I would recommend you apply these to the back of your hand or to a palette and pick it up with your brush and then apply it. But for the sake of the video, why not? We'll show you, you can still apply it and blend it out with the one dot method and boom. You already know these blushes are pigmented. So don't go overboard with applying them to the face. That color is really pretty. It is a very subtle color. It is definitely more of a nudie coral. And I think applying it over a light layer of foundation is kind of helping with blending and kind of sharing out some of that pigment. I'm gonna do a little bit more, not too much, but so far I'm liking this color. It's blending really well and it's leaving behind a slight glow. So this is not a matte formula at all. It has just a beautiful natural glow and it blends really well without leaving behind any patchiness and it's not drying down too quickly. That is Coral Rose, glowy and way too much product, but I think you get the idea. What I normally do is apply my blush and if I overdo it, I blend it back with my powder or with my foundation brush. But here you have it, this is Coral Rose, which I think is described well. It's a nude coral. It leans a little bit more on the rosy side as well. It's an orangey kind of tangerine shade, really pretty. All right, are you ready for Lily Love? This one is described as rich and deep bronze with warm, earthy tones. Okay. I am fearful that she's gonna be intense, all right? Still like just a couple of dots, nothing crazy. Cleaning off my brush very well. And let's blend her out. Ooh, okay. So this color is giving a little bit more of a terracotta. So it definitely is more red base. It's still an orangey tone but it has a lot of that bricky red vibe to it. Oh, that is pretty. That is pretty. Oh my God, that is pretty. I know, I'm blending blush everywhere, but mmm, yes. So this one is a little bit more strawberry almost, like a little bit more pinky than the coral rose. You see, it's given a bit more of a watermelon vibe. It's still very subtle and pretty, right? And this one is a little bit more orangey. Oh my God, I love this. I love both of these shades so far. 
This one is given more pink, cool tone, and this one is given warmer, more corally orange. So this one is Lily Love. I love it. And then this one is Coral Rose. I love both. I prefer Lily Love. All right, next two shades. Let's wipe these off. Now we have the deeper oranges, and the lighter of the two is Perky Poppy. This is described as a deep, earthy tone. They should have just said this is a, whoa, brick orange. It looks like a brick orange in the bottle. It is making me a little bit nervous because it is looking a kind of rich, but let's blend her out. I think I put too much, so I'll just clean off some of that excess on my washcloth and blend it out. All right, this one is definitely a pigmented girl. Okay, mama, okay. I would definitely need to be a little bit more <laughs> be a little bit more light-handed with her but she is given this is more of a red based tone it's definitely more red like a brick red or like I wouldn't even say like a candy apple red. It's like a warm tone red. And if this ever happens to you, you're going about your business, you're trying to apply your blush, and lo and behold, it goes everywhere because it's a lot. Grab your foundation brush, or even your sponge if you use a sponge, right? Grab a little bit more of your foundation, blend it out on the back of your hand or a palette, and just go around the blush. Just tame it. It's not that big a deal. Just tame it a little bit and go over it with your translucent powder and boom. The blush is tame. You're fine. Everything is fine. Everyone will be okay and we have a more subtle look to the blush. I'm going to go back in with a little bit more just because we blended some of it away with the foundation and the powder. So now I'm going to pop it on the back of my hand, right? Which I recommended. You can still see the blush, obviously, right? And I'm gonna go in with my brush, pick up just a little bit on the brush, and tap it off. Kind of like tap it off on the back of your hand. So you get rid of the majority of the pigment, and then you pop it on your cheek and concentrate it where you want it. Boom. Easy peasy. It's that simple. Everybody going crazy about these blushes needs to relax. First of all, stay in your lane, maybe it wasn't for you. Okay, so that's the first one. Let's now go in with the darker one, which is Dahlia. Oh, Dahlia, you're making me a little bit nervous. Dahlia is a burnt red tone. This is going to be intense, so I'm just going to, we're going to dot it. Dot it on the cheek. We're going to go, you know, go for it. Just a little bit. Clean off our brush and... Blend her out. Now this one, I'm a little bit nervous about. <laughs> oh my God, all right, see, this shade is not for me. See, I would know that and I would back off. I'd be like, you know what? This is not my shade. I should pick something else, but I can still blend it out on my cheek and see what the vibe is. So this is definitely more red. Yeah, it definitely is given candy apple red, but not like too, too red. It still has, <laughs> I know, I look crazy, mind your business. It's given strawberry or even watermelon because it has some warmth to it. It's not like a true candy apple red. It's a pretty shade though. That is way too much blush. <laughs> Again, see what's happening here? Let's go in with our foundation brush. And what's gonna happen is we're just gonna apply foundation over this so it's almost like underpainting. But what I'm doing is just making sure that that blush isn't as intense on both sides. Let's go on both sides. So here we have Perky Poppy, which is definitely more orange, and then Dahlia, which is more red. I do like both and I can definitely work with both, but I don't think these shades are for me. These are for a richer, deeper complexion, for real. And these are gonna look beautiful. They're almost like an amped up version of the Coral Rose and Lily Love. So these I would recommend for my complexion, right? 
These are the dialed up versions for deeper, richer skin tones. And I like that because they do have lighter shades than this in their collection that you can choose from. And I would stick to these medium shades, which are giving me the same vibe of these, just a little less punchy. But I could still use these richer shades. I just probably wouldn't because I would have to do a little bit more work to keep it toned down. So this is a vibe, but I feel like this should be reserved again for my sisters with a richer, deeper skin tone as it should be. I actually really like the shade selection from Juvia's and I'll mention that a little bit more, but let's go in now with the final shade. Let me apply a little bit more foundation. By the way, I'm using the Smashbox Always On. This is a great foundation. I've been loving this foundation. My initial application today was with the Prada foundation because I wanted to see if there was any way I could fall in love with Prada because right now it's just okay. And $70 is not an okay price point. So I mixed it in with my Smashbox, you know, just to see if I could get some use, but I'm like, I love the Smashbox. Why would I water it down? Yeah, water it down with the Prada when I can just use it on its own and get the vibe that I'm going for, you know? So foundation back on, go in with a little powder. And this is an application tip for these kinds of products and what I've learned from using this formula. Powder, just lightly, you don't have to go in heavy handed. Very light dusting, my Kosas powder is my go-to. This is kind of like the perfect powder for any application of complexion products. It's lightweight, it doesn't do much to add coverage, and it doesn't get cakey, so it doesn't affect the application of your other products, even if you go in with a cream or a liquid after, right? So now, grabbing our Barbie Rose. This one is a rose pink. This is scary. It is bright, okay? It looks intense, it looks crazy. So let's do this one two different ways. So one, with the, yeah, the, you see that? It's neon. I don't even, like, I don't even think you're seeing the neon. And let me just, Christ. <laughs> no, stop it, oh my God. All right, I'm gonna pick some of that up with a paper towel. That much came off, right? And then let's blend it out. So another tip, if you get too much on your face, just pick some up, you're all right, you'll be all right. You will be, ooh, that color is so pretty. I saw someone with a rich skin tone apply the shade. It looked so pretty on her. That's why I'm like, I need to get this shade as well. And oh my goodness, that is pretty. That is a pretty shade, oh my goodness. Okay, okay. I am picking up what you are putting down. That is a stunning, stunning shade. Intense, okay? Don't apply it directly on your face like I was telling you. So what I'm gonna do instead is grab my palette, dab a little bit on the palette itself, right? Grab our brush, grab a little bit of the product, so that much and dab it around on the palette. So I'm creating a sheer, a sheer wash of the color, right? Very sheer wash, and then go from the palette to the cheek. And if you still get too much on the brush, grab your paper towel or your washcloth, which I always have a washcloth handy, clean your brush off and just go at the product and blend it out. Easy as that. This one is very pigmented. Ooh, it's so pretty though. Oh my God. This is such a pretty color. Oh wow. I'm actually going to see if I can pick up a couple lighter shades and exchange these two deep ones. Cause those two deep ones, I can't get over how pretty, this is such a pretty pink. So it's like a neon pink. It's given vibrant, it's given watermelon. It's more like a bright, vivid coral pink. Ooh, that is nice. I definitely did too much, but that is nice. 
You see how we got a more subtle vibe on this side than this side? So apply it to a palette rather than directly on your face. Even though I still kind of have too much going on, we're gonna back it off. We're gonna back it off, all right? So remember our trick, grab your foundation brush, and I'm not even going to apply any more product on the brush. I'm just going to use the brush and whatever is left on it to go around that color. Mm hmm and do the same on this side but just be a little bit more heavy-handed here I can even use a little bit yeah let me use a little concealer on the underneath because you know and blend that out I don't want it to be too pink around my nose or too low I want the color to be higher just like that It's pretty. I'm not even going I'm not even going to hold you. And then just go back in and blend. And then here's the final part of your trick. Go in with your powder again and back it off with the powder. Oh, and that seals everything in and it will look like you're naturally, well, not really, right? But mostly <laughs> naturally flush. Look at that. That is such a stunning shade. I'm sorry, don't talk to me. This is so pretty. I am loving that. So there you go with the application demonstration, how you can correct over applying these and how you probably should go ahead and approach applying these products. Because again, they're pigmented, but beautiful. If you have a richer skin tone, forget it girl, this is for you. Yes, and I'm still gonna participate because we have some medium shades that work for me And I'm actually in love with these two shades the coral rose and lily love and also the barbie rose But this one is really punchy really pigmented. Maybe these three are just the vibe and I don't need any more Yeah, I probably don't need any more but This color is really good. All right, guess what I did I went ahead and got five more shades. I know I know okay I couldn't help myself the shades that I was testing out applied so well, blended so beautifully, that I needed to check out some more shades. So I picked up some more of the light shades to try out for you. So let's get right into these shades. And again, I have pairs to try out. So we have two of the pink tones. This is Rosy Posy and Pink Lady. And then we have two warmer tones. So we have Soft Tulip and marigold and then our loner is going to be peach rose which is another one of the bright shades it looks like it could be similar to barbie rose but it's not it's definitely more on the pink side so let's go ahead and try out these next five shades so let's start out with rosy posy which just says it has rose tones this is a lighter pink and I prepped my skin already, but we already know what to expect with these. They're very pigmented. So I'm just gonna pop one dot on my cheek. Same brush. And this one is, ooh, oh yeah. This is more of a Pepto-Bismol pink. You know that light blue tone pink that people have been going crazy for? Oh my God, this is so stunning. Oh wow, oh wow. Let me tell you, this is a gorgeous color. If you were looking for that cool tone pink that has been viral lately, I would say this is the shade for you. It is stunning. It definitely is more on the cool tone side, so it has a little bit of purpley, maybe even a lavender hue to it. Yeah, that is pretty. I love that shade. And even though I thought it was gonna be too light on my skin tone, no, it turned out really well. All right, Pink Lady. This one is described as a candy pink. Now this one is more of a medium tone. One dot, we learned our lesson, one dot. And I think the one dot actually worked out really, really well for Rosie Posey. And now we have Pink Lady. This one is a little bit more intense. So like I said, remove some of the product from your brush if you do this type of application and you realize you have too much. Okay, this one is kind of the same shade, but just deeper. So it's still that cool tone pink, but it's a little bit richer. 
So if you have medium and deeper skin tones, this would work out better than this one. But this one I feel like could still work on my skin tone, but I'd probably say save this for medium and tan skin. And then this one would be for my skin tone now. So you get that cool tone pink, but it's more of a medium depth level now. Oh yeah, that color is pretty. She's more intense, obviously, but she is pretty. Again, a cool tone pink. That one's just a lighter version. And this one's a richer, deeper version. Oh my God, I love both shades, but I would go with Pink Lady for my complexion. All right, now let's go for the peachier tone, starting off with Soft Tulip, which is described as soft pops of peach. This is definitely a lighter tone. This is for lighter skin tones, fair skin even, maybe medium. So I don't really think this is going to work, but let's see. Okay, so the pigment is there undeniably okay it's there and it's not reading too wait a minute it's not reading ashy or too milky at all okay so listen i think juvia's place has done it okay this is a very light tone if you're into very subtle blushes ideal okay this is a great soft watermelon peach i wouldn't even say it's straight up peach it still has a little bit more pink to it but it's still a more warm tone shade that is lovely oh my goodness yes 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 okay soft tulip i thought this was going to be too light but instead of being too light where it looks milky or too ashy it just looks more subtle on my skin so soft tulip Definitely a hit. Let's go in with Marigold, which I'm kind of excited about. This one is more of, ooh, yeah. So this one is described as a soft peach. I think I put way too much just now. I don't know why I went back. Oh my God, am I going to suffer now? Let's see. Okay. And what I'm finding is that as you tap and go around these shades, they blend out really easily. There's no patchiness, there are no dry spots, it's not lifting the foundation that I already have down. It just blends in place if you concentrate the blend that way. But if you want to blend it all the way out like I have been doing, not on purpose, yeah on purpose. But if you just blend it all the way, it will go all the way out. But it blends like really easily, do you see what I'm saying? Even though I had way too much on, it still blended out. Oh my God, Marigold is a winner. If you wanted really subtle, Soft Tulip, and then Marigold, do not play with me. This is so good. Marigold is probably my favorite color so far because it has this beautiful warm peach look to it, but it's still impactful without being overwhelming. This is like an ideal shade for me because it's still subtle. You see, it's a subtler shade, but it's not too subtle where I don't see it. That is nice. Marigold and Soft Tulip. And I think both of these look great, but this one is definitely a softer tone. All right, so time for the final shade and I'm going to apply it the way I would in a full face application. So I went ahead and touched up my foundation, applied my powder and also applied a bit of bronzer. So this is truly a full face application. And again, I'm going to be a little bit more precise with how I apply this because I'm going to be wearing this look. So this shade is Peach Rose, which is described as a peachy pink. I'm gonna put it on my palette because I know this is intense, right? And I'm going to go in with a BK Beauty 106 brush. This brush is just a little larger than the Singe Beauty brush. They're both synthetic, but the BK Beauty one just has a larger surface area. So I'm gonna pop that on my cheek and I would do both cheeks. So I wouldn't apply the product directly on my cheeks because like I said, intense, right? But if I dab it on my palette and work it into the brush first, then I can get 
less product and a little bit more of a controlled application even though the product is really intense and what I'll do as usual I got a little bit too much on this side is clean off my brush and a paper towel or a washcloth will do I usually have a clean washcloth handy and I'll take off as much of the product from my brush as possible and then go around the product this color is really stunning it's more subdued than the Barbie Rose shade for sure and I like the application on this side a lot better because it's not as intense but the color is like a warm pink it is really pretty how is it described pinky peach yeah that's true it's a pink but it's a little bit warmer than your usual pink it has a little bit of a corally note to it that is really pretty but this is still like a little bit more intense than I wanted to go for so let's go in with our foundation brush and just clean up a little bit of that just mainly by my nose I don't want the blush to come all the way in and again that's the way you would tame this type of product and then you can reapply as much as you want oh my god that color is stunning and it has a slight glow right so I don't have to go in with highlighter okay I'm happy with that let me go ahead and do some cute stuff and we'll be back to finish up the video all right now that you've seen all the swatches and you've seen this product up close and personal you've seen the demonstration you've seen the pros and cons of the formula how about we jump into my actual thoughts on the product starting out with the price point these retail for $18 it's a little steep I'm not gonna hold you okay it's a little steep for me but I was able to get this on discount using my coupon code from Ulta so Ulta has this coupon that is good for $3.50 off a $15 purchase so any purchase that you make in store with qualifying brands which Juvia's Place falls under you can get $3.50 off so that's what I did you know me okay I went ahead and ordered each of these for in-store pickup using that coupon so I was able to get them for $14.15 a pop which I think is a more digestible price point I think they're decently priced given the amount of product you're getting you're getting 8 milliliters or 0.27 fluid ounce of product which is a decent amount of product for a liquid blush so I think the price point is good but you can get it at an even better price point if you use coupons plus Juvia's Place has sales all the time so you can take advantage of that and get it at a better price point all I'm saying is that $18 price point may sound a little bit steep you don't quite want to spend $20 on a liquid blush from Juvia's Place that is considered somewhat higher-end drugstore don't let that dissuade you because again you can use your coupons or you can find these on sale I am okay with the price point at that $14.15 which is how I made it worthwhile for me and why I ended up with 10 shades packaging it is kind of signature Juvia's place there are no frills there are no bells and whistles here it's a simple tube packaging with a doe foot applicator which I actually think works for this type of product it's a liquid blush you have the doe foot applicator that's going to apply just the right amount of product. I know, that's what a caveat, all right? However, just based on the formula, I wouldn't suggest you apply this directly to the skin, but you can, as you saw in my demonstration, just be a little bit more light-handed. But the packaging, I think, is pretty functional, and the cap secures tightly, so there's no real risk of leakage of the product. And I will mention this as well, the sifter actually removes a decent amount of product. But what I really like is that the opening is deeper into the packaging. So you have enough room there to remove excess product if you get a little bit too much on the applicator and it doesn't make a mess around the cap of the product. So I think overall, again based on the formulation the packaging was done really well now let's go ahead and jump into the product and the performance which is what you're really here for right so let's talk about it first of all I have to address the criticism 
People on TikTok have been applying this product in abundance to their cheeks and then complaining about how pigmented it is. They're in fact saying, it's too pigmented. I can't believe Juvia's Place created this product that is just unusable. And I'm like, hold, hold, hold on. Hold on, wait a minute, all right? First of all, first of all, Juvia's Place is very clear on their packaging that this is a pigmented formula. It says it that this is a pigmented cream formula. I don't know like what else they needed to tell you. <laughs> like they said it's pigmented on their website, on Ulta's website, it says it's a pigmented cream blush. Can you read? Like what's going on? No, but like for real though, it's disclosed under the product description. It's a pigmented product. So why would you go in with several dots on your cheeks if you know this is a pigmented formula? And then why upon first application and you realize that you did way too much, as you saw, I was applying this directly to my cheeks and sometimes I did way too much. Like why didn't you then counteract that by applying less product and then manipulating it in a way that would blend it out like right now i am wearing the shade which shade did i use hold hold the phone it was pink lady right pink lady this is what i'm wearing right now on my cheeks do you see that come on that is beautiful but this is how i would apply it in an everyday situation right a little bit goes a long way I blend it out on a palette, so I have my foundation, but I have a palette that I blend it out on using my brush, boom, 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 done. No problem. And I didn't even have to go in and fix or tweak my complexion product because I learned just by using this more and more how to apply it, just how much to apply and what brushes work best for it. And it irks me to no end that content creators are all about that rage baiting, right? The viral content, because that is what people want to see, the drama of it all. And truly, if you want it to be helpful, you would give people tips and tricks on how to use the product because it is a fantastic product let's just cross my t and dot my i right there it is a fantastic product the blendability absolutely when they say this is blendable i'm like hold up now wait a minute let me try it first i reserve judgment until i try it and i do agree this formula is really blendable even when you go overboard and you have way too much product on your brush or on your face it still blends out you saw from the application and demonstration these blend and blend and blend they don't set down right away so you have time to work Work with them and they keep blending so you can definitely blend these out they're easy to blend and I love the finish of them it's not an ultra dewy finish and they do say it's a cream which is interesting as well because it's true it's not quite a liquid blush it is more like a liquefied cream it is a creamy formula it's not runny it's a thicker liquid cream almost it's not lotiony at all it's like, it's not a mousse, but it's like a thicker, creamy liquid, right? It applies beautifully, blends beautifully, and leaves behind this beautiful finish that's not too dewy, which is key for me. I have oily skin. The finish is not radiant, as they say, where it's glowy. It's just radiant in that it looks like skin. I didn't powder this. This was applied after my powder, which is another great thing about the formula. It applies well over foundation and over powder products. So you don't have to worry about the caking and the crepiness that you can create with a cream product and powders mix in. No, this applies so beautifully over powder. It blends out so well and it sets down almost like a cream to powder finish. It's not quite cream to powder though, but it sets down and it doesn't budge. It stays in place. It doesn't fade. So if you have issues with blush fading, this formula is going to work for you. If you have issues with products showing up on you, if you have a deeper, richer skin tone, this blush was made for you. Like Juvia's Place is a black owned brand that is creating products that other brands don't create on the market for deep, rich skin tones. Let's call a spade a spade, okay? These brands don't create products for rich skin tones. And Juvia's Place came in and said, 
We're going to create products for us, by us. And that's exactly what they did. And a comparison that has been drawn is to the Rare Beauty Liquid Blushes. And they have some really pigmented shades in their collection as well. But these also went viral because people fell in love with the formulation and with some of the lighter tones. So you see how it's kind of hypocritical. They're really pigmented shades from Rare Beauty as well. That's my chair. Don't worry about it. They're really pigmented shades from Rare Beauty as well that people just stay away from because they know they can't handle this, right? It's not for them. So for them to complain about the Juvia's Place, I'm just like, really? And I feel like the formula differences makes the Juvia's Place a little bit more user friendly because with the Rare Beauty ones, these are more liquidy and because they're so liquidy, they're a little less easy to control. Even though I still find the formula usable, it's easy to blend out and apply. I just feel like the Juvia's Place is better because it gives a smoother appearance on the skin this can go zero to patchy really quickly and it doesn't interact with base products as well as the Juvia's Place one, which is what I really love about the Juvia's Place formula. It blends in with your skin and with your other products and it doesn't lift or create any patchy spots. It just gives a smooth look to the skin. So if you're selecting colors, like I didn't pick up the deepest shade, which is Sweet Berries, which is a deep burgundy tone. The deepest shades I picked up were Perky Poppy, which is a deep earthy tone, and then Lily Love, which is a rich and deep bronzed earthy tone. Those were almost a little bit too intense for me, right? But I was still able to use them, but I know to stay in my lane when it comes to those shades. There's a wide range of 12 shades from light to deep. The deeper shades are going to be for richer skin tones. Obviously, they're not for me. So I'm gonna stay in the mid-tone range, which honestly, truly I can use all of it okay and that's what I love all the shades I picked up looked beautiful on me even the lightest shade which is soft tulip this one is obviously for lighter skin tones right medium even pale skin tones even this worked on me so I feel like across the board this formula just works I think the shades work and maybe if you're really pale or you have really fair skin these might be too much. I can't speak to that. I truly wouldn't know that. And if you feel like these shades are just too pigmented for you, just stay away, but don't criticize it and make like comments that Juvia's Place didn't create a product for me. Now you know how we feel. Now you know how we feel. Welcome to the club. But I feel like the majority of the shades would work for you if you're medium and tan and you have deep red skin tones. For fair skin tones, honestly, truly, stick to the lighter shades. We have Soft Tulip. And what's the other shade that I didn't pick up? Blushed Lily. And Blushed Lily is a really pale, pale pink. So I feel like Blushed Lily and then, of course, Soft Tulip would work on a lighter skin tone as well as these two lighter shades, Marigold and Rosy Posy. These still work on me though, so just go really light-handed. Use less product than you think. You already know what you're in store for, so just use less, you know what I mean? You can definitely make these work because the blendability is there, and that is key for me. If you have a really pigmented product, it should be blendable, so you can fade it out and get the best look on your skin tone. My favorite shades are going to be right out the gate, Peach Rose. I love this shade. It's a bright, bold, in-your-face shade, as well as Barbie Rose. Intense. I really love it, but it's bright. It's neon. It's not for the tame of heart. These two shades, I feel like, are the most neon in the selection. And then another favorite is Pink Lady. That's what I'm wearing right now. I think it's such a beautiful color. I also love Marigold. It's so good. And I feel like, again, this is kind of an across the board shade. It's so good. It shows up on my skin tone, but I think it would also work on lighter skin tones. The shades I'm a little bit fearful of that I would say probably stay away if you have lighter skin tone or even my skin tone for real. It would be Dahlia and Perky Poppy. They're intense, they're deep, they're rich. Like they're gonna give you a lot of color. These I would say are the most intense on my skin tone, the ones I'm the most leery of. 
But other than that, the other shades work for me. The Lily Love shade is probably going to be your substitute for these shades. If you see, these three shades are kind of in the same family with Lily Love being the lightest one. So there's a shade for everybody in this range and I think a lot of people can fall in love with the formula if you use it appropriately. And for your brushes, go with a synthetic brush that's a little bit more dense. So don't use something that's too floppy. It's just gonna make a mess. Go in with a stiffer, denser synthetic brush and just pounce it out. The ideal brush I have used is the Full Coverage Foundation brush from Smashbox. That's what I used today and it blended this product out so beautifully. It was so good, oh my God. But there you have it. Those are my final thoughts about this product. Have you picked it up? Are you interested? I hope this video was helpful in making your decision and hopefully my tips and tricks also benefit you if you do pick this product up. Just go light-handed. It is pigmented, which they fully disclose in their product description. It's pigmented and richer, deeper skin tones need that. So I appreciate that Juvia's Place is making products for us, by us. And I appreciate the shade range because I have so many fun new liquid blushes to work with. And in fact, I should say, this is probably one of my favorite liquid blush formulas to date, to date, because of how blendable it is and I love that the formula is more of a creamy liquid, a thicker cream rather than a runny liquid as I've found with other liquid blushes on the market. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you're gonna try this out and I will leave links on where you can pick them up down below on the Juvia's Place website and at Ulta. Those links, well, just the Ulta one will be an affiliate link, which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through that link. It is a great way to show your support for the channel. It doesn't change the sale price. All my affiliate links and codes are marked with an asterisk. So that, again, helps me to put right back into the content. But if you're not comfortable with that, just shop the way you normally shop. No must, no fuss. I'm still happy you're here watching. I will leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where you can follow me along. And until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye, guys. Thank you.